Today we will be talking about the Enhance system in Maya. So let's quickly get into it. I'm gonna start off by taking a single primitive. You can take any object that you want. So I'm gonna start off with a sphere. Now in here is a dynamic system which allows you to create hairs. Um, and uh, it creates a pretty interesting patterns. Uh, you can do a lot with that system. So let's see what we can create with that. Now I'm gonna switch to FX menu and here you'll find in here. Now in here works in three different types. Now if you go to the in here, you'll find there's a create here menu here. Now if you open this up, uh, you, the first thing that you'll find is the paint effect. Now if you create this, it creates uh, the hair with the paint effect and you will see all the follicles here, uh, the red ones. And uh, if you get out of this, uh, let me delete all of this. You can also create hair with nerve curls, create here, and that way you'll also get the control of controlling your vertices, all the points and everything. And apart from this, you'll also have the option of creating your hair with paint effect and the nerve curve, where it creates the hair follicles with the, the paint effect and the in hair, uh, the spline based. All right, so for now, what we need is the paint effect. So I'm going to start off by creating here in the setting menu and paint effect. I'm going to keep everything to default as we can also change this later on and create here. And there you go. So you have created a very nice hair system. Now let's open up the hair system menu here and let's uh, go to the top. Now here you'll notice that the simulation method has been set to all follicles. If you want you can set this off and you'll notice that everything has disappeared. Uh, if you are working on a lot of different hair and if you don't want to see a certain hair particularly, then you can turn this off. Static means nothing will be moving at all. So if I play this, you'll notice that nothing is happening. And then there are two types of uh, dynamic follicles only. If you have a dynamic supplied on certain follicles, then this will be affecting those. And if you want all follicles, you can keep it to all. I'm going to keep it to all. And then uh, here comes the display quality, which is the overall quality of your entire hair system. Now similarly, uh, like we have the base resolution for the 3D container in fluids, this is exactly the same. Now uh, here it will ask you if you want to use the nucleus solver, uh, since we have a nucleus, since this is a dynamic system, it has its own nucleus which controls all the dynamic properties like the gravity and if you want you can also create a ground plane and then we have the most important thing which is the substep value of the solver attribute which we'll get into later on. Now the first thing that you will see is hair per clump and uh, if you want more hairs you can increase the clumps and if you want less hair like a uh, small amount of hairs you can keep them to small. Now I'm going to keep this to somewhere about 100 if you want you can maybe go beyond 100 if you want uh, you can go for 150 and so on let's keep it 150 and then if you have a baldness map like the texture map that we get roughness map specular map we have we get certain type of baldness map if you have that you can plug it right here and then here uh, you have the sub segment now if i play this now you'll notice our hair is uh, dynamically falling and creating a nice simulation but if you'll notice closely our hair are pretty rigid you can see all the hard edges and so on if you want to make them smoother all you have to do is increase the amount of sub segment and it's basically uh, consider it as a curve the more amount of point you have the smoother it's going to look but obviously it's going to take more time for the calculation so you can increase the number as you want all right moving on then you have the thinning if you look closely uh, all our hairs are looking pretty much the same if you look really closely uh, let me just go back and if you look closely everything is completely uh, symmetrical everything is uniform and uh, in the natural here there's always some kind of informality or you can say um, some kind of thinning so thinning allows you to create that type of effect if you increase this you'll notice around your follicles uh, you get that randomized some hair are long some hair are mid long and then you have short hair and so on so this will create a really nice effect. So I'm going to keep the thinning to right about 0.5, something like this. And then you have the clumping. And clumping decide how much uh, clump hair your, your hair are clumped. So there are two types of thing to consider here, the clump width and the clump twist. Now if you increase the twist, the clump will start to twist from the start where the follicles are generating the hairs. And you'll notice our follicles are, all our hair are kind of rotating here. So I'm going to keep this to zero. And then you have the bend flow. 
Now I'm gonna let this fall right about here and I'm gonna pause this. Now the bend flow con uh, controls the overall bendiness of the hair. So if I start to reduce this, you will start to see that uh, you are getting this type of a very small thinning kind of effect. How much bendiness you are getting and uh, if you increase this, you are getting more of a full hair bendiness. Right? Now the next thing that we have is the clump width and again this decides amount of clump width you have on your hair. So if I increase this, the, start, uh, the hair will start to spread out and uh, kind of creates the whole region, kind of fills the whole region. And it's not like uh, you cannot go beyond the one, you can obviously go beyond one if you want to two and so on. Uh, now the next thing that we have is the hair width. Now this is again decides the amount of width your hair has. Now if I increase this nothing will happen, you won't see anything. Obviously because uh, you have to see this in uh, your IPR window. And I'm going to increase our resolution our brightness for this. Let's bring this here. Now let's uh, focus on this area and I'm going to increase my clump width, uh, sorry hair width and if I reduce this you'll notice how thin hair we are getting and as much as, as I go for a higher number you'll notice that we are getting thicker and thicker hair. So again this totally depends on you how much uh, broader or thick hair you want, the larger width you want. All right. Moving on. So um, looking at the next thing, uh, then we have the clump width scale. Again, you get a really nice uh, thing here uh, to control your clump width. If you want randomization, if you want it to start with a higher width and go for low width, as you can see here on the overall um, graph here. So if I reduce this, you'll start to notice that uh, we are basically changing our, if you want much more broader hair from the start to end, you can keep it to linear or you can change it to however you want to create a pretty interesting shape. Right, and now you have something like this, pretty interesting. Now moving on, uh, I'm going to keep it right about here. Then we have the hair width scale. Again, this uh, controls this, but with uh, you can say in a graph value, if you want, again, if you want a number from going Instead of linear, you want 1 to 0, like in the start it's having a pretty broad hair strands and then as it goes longer and longer, it gets thinner and thinner, you can control it with here. And then you have the curl, if you want to curl your overall clumps, you can do that, right, and so on. And then again, you have the flatness of your clumps, All right, you can control that with again a nice graph. Uh, if you want, uh, let's uh, get into the collision. All right, let's open this up. For the collision, as you can see, we have the collide turn on and the self collide as default is turned off. So make sure you turn this on. Now your all your hair will collide with each other. So I'm gonna let this fall, and uh, now your hair are kind of colliding with each other, creating a very nice hair effect. Right. Uh, then again, I'm pretty sure uh, all of you are pretty familiar with uh, bound frictionless and everything dynamic properties. We have already covered this in the particle and cloth and fluid dynamics, so it's all the same. Now, since uh, this does not work well with the, the overall fields and solver, it has its own turbulence and everything. You can increase the intensity. Now here, you'll notice that apart from gravity, nothing is working on this. So if I increase the turbulence, the turbulence will start to take effect, thus creating a very nice and natural effect of wind. You can also add some wind from the nucleus if you want. It's totally up to you. All right. So you can control that as well. The last thing that you get is a real nice shading. If you want, you can increase the shading however you want. You can also attach a ramp to this and control a gradient with this or maybe take a different color depending upon what exactly you want. And so on. And again, you can uh, change the overall scale of the hair color, how much darker and lighter pattern that you want uh, the translucency here, and uh, you'll be getting that kind of color here. All right. Now, since this is shading uh, the overall hair with the native system, the native color system, there is a way to create your own shader with this with the anil, which we'll be seeing in future videos. Uh, but for now, this is uh, how you can pretty much shade with the overall native shader it will create a pretty nice effect it's not that bad but yeah uh, apart from this if you want a certain areas to be 
uh, created with the in here. For example, if you have a head like this, and uh, you want to create a certain hair to about right about here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift right click and duplicate this face. So now we have two faces. I have this top part and the bottom part. So I'm going to select the top part, go to in here, create hair, and there you go. So now you have the face part, and then you have the hair. Again, you can go to your hair system and make sure your collision has been set to self collide as well. Uh, add more hair follicles and uh, so on. Add a bit more clumpiness. Now here you'll notice that the hair is a bit too long for this character. All right. So now to control your hair, all you have to do is go to in here, and here you will find scale hair tool. Click on that and just left click and drag how small or large hair you want. That's it. So from here you can again start uh, experimenting with your hair, how much clumpiness you want, how much bend you want, and uh, we do something like uh, this, and there you go. So that is fall now, All right? So again you can select uh, the overall uh, this guy here. I'm gonna get out of my tool, and uh, let's play this now. So there you go. So just create a passive collider for the sphere and it won't uh, get intersected with your hair. Now let's see this. So there you go. So again you can increase the amount of width you have on the hair to get a thicker hair. Alright. And then again feel free to dive into the shading, how a lighter or darker shade you want of the overall hair. Alright, so that, that was it for the introduction part of the in here. Uh, enjoy this and try to create some interesting hair with this. There's a lot of different things that you can pull off with this. Right, so that's it and I'll see you in the next video.